Hello and welcome back. In this section we're going to continue looking at graphics and I'm going to return to the sales figures for the team of five salespeople that we've looked at a couple of times before. Last time we used um, some conditional formatting with color scales to illustrate how well or poorly each of our five salespeople is doing. This time we're going to use some of the graphics and smart art we saw in the last section to do a sort of presentation display for each of these people. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that we have a live data feed for sales for each of these people. Uh, I'm actually doing this in the month of May and I'm going to get rid of these June figures for the moment and for the May figures I'm going to remove the conditional formatting and I'm going to assume that for each of the salespeople they've been given a target for the month of May which I'm going to put in the next column and I'm going to record in the H column their progress towards that target as a percentage. So in Anne's case this will be F2 divided by G2. I then format cells, change it to a percentage and I'll say no decimal places. I can then fill that down and I can see the percentages for each of the salespeople, their target number or value of sales and their actual performance so far in the month. Now what I'm going to do is to insert a smart art graphic. and I'm going to choose one of the hierarchy graphics I'm going to actually choose that one table hierarchy now what I plan to do is to have a heading on the whole graphic but to have one leg of the graphic for each of my five salespeople so I need the five legs to be equal so I'm going to select this one and press delete and then I'm going to select that one add shape after and with the newly selected one add shape below repeat that exercise twice more and there we are now I have the five legs that I'm going to use in my graphic now let me explain what's going on what I'm going to do is to put some effectively live data onto a graphic as a means of presenting it other than the graphs and charts that we've seen so far but I want to use the graphic capabilities of Excel 2010 as far as I can now I can't actually with this as a smart art graphic do all the things I need to do in terms of putting the progress indicators and so on on there but I can do virtually all of the presentational side and then I can convert it from a smart art graphic into individual shapes and then I can add the data to the shapes in a very straightforward way so first of all I'm going to get the graphic side sorted out then I'm going to put the content into it 
So first of all I'm going to just move the graphic a little and then increase the size Okay, and then on the page layout tab I'm going to choose a theme for it uh, it's currently the black tie theme uh, it's the default so let's try something else uh, something that's not too awful um, Let's try the um, hardcover theme. And then having chosen a the theme, we now click in there again, go back into the Smart Tools Design tab, and we're going to choose a style. Now there's a number of styles available. Um, let's go for one of these 3D ones, Polished, Inset, cartoon let's go for inset I think okay and then we can change the colors and again drop down on there primary theme colors are these I think we can probably stick with that or shall we try accent accent 2 5 yes I think I quite like the look of that one ok so now I'd like to um, change the shape of the top box here I've just got the level 1 box selected and on the format tab under smart art tools I can change the shape to any one of these available shapes I'm going to change it to that sort of horizontal scroll shape there and in fact maybe we can change these what about that sort of shape yes Now it's important to recognize that although I can do all of this shape changing here working with the smart art graphics um, when I actually come to putting the data in here from the worksheet I won't actually be able to dynamically increase the number of employees or change the shape of the box or whatever I can certainly put the numbers in but there's a limited amount of live formatting that we can do in this situation okay we've done what we can now we go back to the design tab under smart art tools and we say convert to shapes and what actually happens now is that we have a set a group of shapes that can receive data from the worksheet but that are no longer a smart art tool so let's choose one of the shapes let's choose this one Now I'm going to put Anne Carnegie's name in this shape. Anne's name is in cell A2. So I can just put equals A2. Now clearly the font there is too large a size. On the home tab it shows that it's 23 points. I'm going to put it a much smaller size. Let's say um, 11. Then click on the next block and that's Scott Denver's name tick that and again reduce it to 11 points and of course I can now go through the rest of these and assign the names accordingly so with a tiny bit more adjustment I managed to make the rest of those fit now I'm going to put in the progress indicators for Anne that is H2 and again I can do the same for all of the others so there we are that's now beginning to look pretty good 
Now, when you're presenting data using this sort of graphic approach, um, you probably wouldn't, generally speaking, have the table of data behind. You'd be either making this on a blank sheet or you'd be moving it out of the way as we did before when we were working on pivot charts and doing it elsewhere on the same sheet. I'm going to do one more thing now just to put in the heading here and I'm going to work on that further down the sheet just so that it's not quite so visible. It's going to click in anywhere and I'm going to type in something to use in the heading. So it's going to be um, team progress as at ampersand. Now I need to convert now into a format of we'll put the month, the day of the month, comma, and the time of day, I think. That should be about right. May 13, 1822. That seems good to me. And then it just remains for me to put that into that banner. So I know that that is B32. Tick that. Oh, I think we need a small up point size there. Um, what is 30, 28, 24, 24 maybe. There we are, that's not bad. So there we are, that's a presentation of my data, not using a conventional graph or chart, but using a graphic that I've built using SmartArt and then basically broken into individual graphic elements. And my data is now on each of those individual graphic elements. Now, I mentioned before about um, overlapping the presentation and the source data on the spreadsheet. It's actually quite easy to move this somewhere else. I could, for instance, create a new sheet, sheet 7 there, back to the target sheet that I've been using, make sure that this group is selected because although it's not a smart art any gra graphic anymore it's still a group of individual uh, graphic elements so I can copy I'll just use control C keyboard shortcut go to sheet 7 and paste and of course the groups there and I can move it and process it as a group as before so if I want to use that elsewhere, including in other documents, then it's readily movable as a group. And we're going to look at um, transferring this to other documents later on. So that's it for this section. But in the next section, we're going to continue with the graphics theme, although we'll be concentrating on linking to other types of documents. So we'll be looking at how we can use our Excel charts, graphics and graphs in, for example, Word documents. So I'll see you then. If this is your first time here, click on the subscribe button to get similar videos every week. Every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you want to see similar videos, click on the links under Check Out These Tutorials by Simon Says It.